All right, this morning on the news, I was explaining why Santa Cruz is usually warmer than Monterey. And I realized the answer is similar to why Sacramento is usually warmer than San Francisco, at least during the summer. And the explanation, I think, is kind of interesting. So I thought I'd just do my best to explain it here. So where we're going to start is with what is called the Pacific High. Now, some people also call it the Hawaiian High. I, I kind of like that more. And the important thing about that is the air around the high is moving clockwise. So what that's going to do is it's going to take this cold water from Alaska and bring it down by the California coast. And that's going to be called the California Current. For any, any surfers out there know that the water off the California coast, you need a pretty thick wetsuit because it's so cold. Whereas on the east coast, the water is actually coming up from the tropics. So it's a lot warmer than our water is. So that's reason number one why the ocean off of California is cold. Now let's get into number two. And I, I promise this will answer our original question. But reason number two is we also have upwelling. So what's going on with upwelling is you have that high that we're talking about and you have your clockwise flow around it. That's gonna lead to the predominant wind direction of kind of northwesterly winds across California most days. Now what that's going to do is it's going to move the water a little bit on the California coast. So you have your wind moving parallel to the coast and you might think that, okay, that's just gonna take your ocean water from Northern California, push it down to Southern California. Turns out it's not that simple. You, you might wish that it would be, but uh, there's always more complications with nature and physics than you might hope. So even though the wind is moving parallel to the coast, the water is actually going to be pushed perpendicular to the coast, almost at a right angle right here. Now the reason for that is because of something called the Ekman spiral. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but it has to do with the rotation of the earth and the Coriolis force. But just take my word for it, the surface water off of the, directly off of the coast or our beaches is going to move directly offshore. So now what's going to happen here is, you know, I probably don't need to tell you this, that your surface water is warm because it's getting heated up by the sun, whereas your water down below is going to be cold. So because we've moved that surface water off of the coast, something has to come in to fill its place. So you get this cold water coming up and we get upwelling. So that's the reason I've been wearing a 5-4 wetsuit instead of a 4-3 or a 3-2 because that cold water comes up. So I've basically established the fact at this point that the California ocean or the, the ocean off of the California coast is cold. So why was that such an important foundation to build? It's because that is the main reason that we have the big temperature or climate difference between Sacramento and San Francisco. So Sacramento is going to actually be colder during winter, but it's going to be hotter during summer. It's gonna have a larger temperature swing. And before we get into the numbers, I think the best way to put it is in an analogy. If you put a rock out on a hot day and you put a cup of water out on a hot day and you come back two hours later and you put your finger in the cup of water, you know that that water is gonna be a little bit warm, but if you touch the rock, it's going to be hot. And the opposite would happen if you put it out, put either of those out on a very cold day. The water might be a little bit cold or it, it'll be cool, but the rock is going to be very cold. And the reason for that, it comes back to what's called either specific heat or heat capacity. What that means is land heats up and cools down faster than water does. So now let's dive into the numbers, but keep, keep that little fact in mind right there. So let's go San Francisco during January. We're gonna call that 52 degrees. And then during August, we're gonna call that 60 degrees. So throughout the year, there's an eight degree difference. And I'm kind of estimating here, but then that's kind of reminds me of that quote from, I believe it's Mark Twain who said the coldest winter he ever felt was the summer in San Francisco. And it's because the temperatures just don't change all that much throughout the year. 
little sneak peek, it's because San Francisco is closer to the ocean. But now let's get into Sacramento. January, let's call that 45 degrees. And August, we'll call it 75 degrees. I'm using easier numbers this time around because my first recording of this video, I did the mental math wrong and now I'm having to record it <laughs> or re-record it. So we're gonna say that's a nice, simple problem with a 30 degree difference for Sacramento. So Sacramento, 30 degree difference between winter and summer. San Francisco, eight degree difference. Why is that? It's because land heats up and cools down faster than water does. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, San Francisco is made out of land as well. Why isn't it just the exact same temperature as Sacramento? And the reason for it is the air that you have above your land isn't just what's been, you know, heating up from the land throughout the day. It's also what's the air that's being moved in by the winds. So remember our high right here clockwise circulation, that's going to lead to predominant northwesterly winds that are going to take some of this cool air from the ocean and move it into San Francisco, almost acting like natural air conditioning and a natural moderator of the climate. Whereas for Sacramento, we're taking some of that inland air, which is going to be hot during summer, moves it in over Sacramento, and that keeps Sacramento just as warm as it would be if there was no air moving in. So that's an example of the Central Valley versus the California coast. But I think what's interesting is we can even go in on an even finer scale here and look at my original question, which is Santa Cruz versus Monterey. So once again, we're gonna set up the fact that we have northwesterly winds and we also have that cold current Let's say the ocean is 52 degrees. Now let's put out some other numbers. We're gonna say it's a classic summer day. So Santa Cruz Mountains is 85 degrees. Santa Cruz we'll say is 75 degrees. I could probably use this as my forecast for most days during the summer. There's not much variation. And then Monterey Peninsula we'll say is 62 degrees. So both Santa Cruz and Monterey are right on the coast but Santa Cruz is 13 degrees warmer. I'm getting better at my mental math here. And the reason for that is you think, where is the air coming from? So with northwesterly winds, we're gonna be taking some of this warm air from our inland areas and moving it into Santa Cruz, kind of heating things up. Now Santa Cruz isn't gonna be as warm as the Santa Cruz mountains because we do still have some moderating effect from the ocean but not as much of a moderating effect or an air conditioning effect as what we have in Monterey. There we're taking this cold air that's above the ocean, which isn't really changing temperature throughout the entire day. It's gonna be 52 degrees basically all summer long. Again, kind of a made up number, but it's probably close. And then the northwesterly winds are gonna take that air and move it in over the Monterey Peninsula, cooling things down, making it colder than Santa Cruz, even though they're both on the coast. So that was probably a lot of words right there. But the basic summary is we have the Pacific high that brings cold water down from Alaska. And so the water off of the California coast is cold. And then because that doesn't heat up as much as land, the air above the ocean stays colder. And then when that air moves in over our coastal cities, it acts like natural air conditioning keeping things more moderated than the inland areas, which are going to be hotter in summer and colder in winter. So hopefully that answered any questions you might have. I'll have more explainer videos on the way and thanks for watching.